Okay, guys, we got a problem with the furnace here. It's got uh, water leaking out here everywhere under the wall. It's all kinds of water here. So what I found out was that the the uh, exhaust fan. This is a condensing furnace. It's a uh, Kenmore, but it's actually made by uh, where's the stupid brand here? International Comfort Products Corporation. Anyhow, uh, I ran into a problem earlier this year and had to replace the, the gas valve. It wouldn't light the flame, and I replaced the. Uh, there's a th not a thermal couple, but a, a sensor in there that measures um, whether or not the flame is actually lit. Anyhow, what's happening right now is you've got all this. This is the exhaust of the furnace right here. It gets uh, spun out by this fan. And it goes up this ABS pipe all the way up and out the outside of the house. Anyhow, the issue is inside the, the fan housing here, all the way along the edge, there's a rubber gasket all the way around there. And what's going on here is that aside from this clip being totally rusted out, uh, there's these these clips here that clip in all the way around the fan and there's a there's a bunch of them so what's going on is you can see there's a puddle of water right there and it's coming off the bottom of the, the fan so essentially it's where this rubber gasket is supposed to be it's uh, leaking out and the rubber of the gasket is totally deteriorated so what we're doing now is we're pulling out the rest of the big bolts that hold this thing to the furnace. There's a bunch of them all the way around. We've had to disconnect. There's a there's a rubber uh, piece of pipe here that's held in by a clamp on either side so the clamp would actually go around there. I've, I've moved that rubber up the pipe so that we can get this out and uh, we're gonna either take it out of there or we're going if we can't get it out we're gonna leave it in place and we're gonna use uh, automotive silicone it blew the uh, gasket material for head gaskets and whatnot or not head gaskets uh, valve cover gaskets and we're going to basically clean up this dry up this whole edge here and, and uh, redo that clamp it back together put uh, the remaining good clamps on the, on the bottom there you can see that bottom clamp is pretty much rusted away and fix it up so that we don't get any water leaks because normally the condensate water comes goes down in that hole in the bottom of the fan, runs down here, runs down this copper line, out the furnace, and then uh, down into a, a hole right there in the ground uh, underneath the slab. So that's where the water is supposed to go. But it's running down into here, and it's soaking everything in the bottom of the furnace, and then it's, it's literally soaking the wall there, you can see. So we'll get that uh, fixed up. Okay, so I just gave this a real nice yank here and pop this off. And you can see where that goes into there, we may want to add a tiny bit of uh, either the electric. Oh my gosh, look at that. That rubber is completely deteriorated. So, we're going to have to use the blue silicone there as well. That's terrible. It's probably the heat and the moisture that's eating it up. So, on the clamshell here, you can see there's our totally rusted clamp on the end, and right here, we're going to have to add some silicone sealer as well so uh, minor repair we'll just take both of these pieces into the shop and then we'll use the compressed air clean them up and get some silicone on there okay so we're now we're out in the shop and you can see this clamshell here there's a bit of a little bit of stuff on this side not a lot this is pretty clean here you know where that 
You just make sure you get off any goo. Clean it up nice, and then we're going to use some compression. We want to get all the moisture out of here before we get the silicone on there. On the part with the motor and the fan here, you can see there's this nasty little clamp. There's nothing left of this thing. It's all rusted to heck. Here's the this rubber gasket. It's just it's totally just uh, it's just little crumbs coming out of there. So we're gonna have to clean out this entire groove all the way around, dry it all out, and then we'll apply some silicone. It's kind of tough getting this stuff out. You gotta just keep working at it with a screwdriver. Get it out of there. I'm gonna clean it, totally clean it all up. Okay, this is the Permatex Super Blue automotive style silicone. And we're just gonna go around this sucker. Nice even bead. Yeah, this is fighting for now. It's all clogged up. There we go. Just gotta fill the groove in nice. If you miss some spots, just go at it again. Just get it all in there, real nice and even. Okay, we've got it all spread around now, so it's best to use a glove. And just spread that around. Make sure you got nice, even coverage. If you've got some extra, slap it in where it looks like it's a little low. Just run it along there. You don't want any chunks, so pull those out. You just want the soft silicone in there. Let's torque it around. Make sure you do a really good job on the bottom. Right, where's the bottom on this guy? Yeah, right there. Okay, that's that's where the water is going to collect. So the top here is not super critical. You're not going to have a lot of leakage of moisture on the top, but. Extra here. Put it in there, leg it there. Just fill it in real nice. There we go. You don't really have any air bubbles or nothing. So what we want to do now is take the other part of the clamshell. This cone was in here. Just pop that back in there and assemble it. And pull this rusty clip off. put some pressure on here there's going to be some blue silicone squeezing out here and there and what we want to do next is get the clamps on there and use the use the good clamps that don't have any rust on the bottom because that's where the issue is okay so we got most of the clamps on there we've got a couple clamps left to do and the only other thing that's left is really just give that a little wipe around the outside get any excess silicone off of there and anything that's on your fingers stuff that gets everywhere all right and then the, the last thing we have to do is we have to put some silicone around this output where the water actually comes out and goes down into the drain because we had a rubber seal on there and that rubber seal was all deteriorated so we're going to get some blue silicone on there as well and then we should be good to go to reassemble. Oh, look, we 
got my supervisor again. <laughs> okay, so got the fan back from the shop, and you can see I put blue silicone on the bottom drain. There's actually a top drain as well, and uh, added some blue silicone there, which is that's the top right drain right there, and the bottom one's on the bottom there. So they're a little bit wet on the inside, so just gonna clean those out and then slap this fan back on. Getting the bolts back in isn't that hard because they're all the same length, so you can't really screw it up one at a time. There's a ground wire that goes under the screw that's over here on this side. Just make sure you pop that in there. And once you got all the screws in, noise everybody's sleeping it's tight it's tight it's tight okay there's no more screws okay so all that's left is we've got this vacuum hose here there's uh, just one nipple on the fan you can't put it in the wrong spot this is actually mounted here I just zap strapped it in the guy the furnace guy that fixed the valve had this just taped in with electrical tape which is pretty lousy so whatever uh, okay here's your ground wire that's got to go back on that bolt and then we've got two power cables here I'm just gonna hook those up and then slap the cover on the furnace and dry out all this water with a towel and then we'll be good to go and we'll check it out tomorrow to see if it's running good and don't forget to put the rubber coupling back on with the two hose clamps Okay, so we've got the lower lid on. There's a switch in here that turns the furnace off if you open up this panel. Right here, there's no switch in the upper panel, so uh, we can leave this open for testing and we'll check it out in the morning. So this, this Kenmore unit we've actually had for about 10 or 11 years now, and aside from the gas valve having to be replaced and the, the lighter, the igniter and the thermocouple thingy, um, it's been really good and you know 92% efficiency it saved us a lot on the gas bills obviously so 